We're going to dive into flow. So let's look at what our instructions are here. We're going to write a function that takes an array of functions and a number that will be piped through all of those functions. The input number passes through the first function, whose output is passed as input to the second function, whose output is passed as input to the third function, and so on. Use recursion to return the final output of the last function in the array. And we know that our first input is going to be a number, uh, and that number is going to be flowing or piped through all of the other functions. And input two is going to be our array of functions. And we're going to pass the input through each of these functions. And our output should be a number. The final output of invoking the last func in func array with our input. Okay, so let's talk about our overall strategy for this problem. So let's say our overall strategy. And what we want to do here is uh, establish our base case. So the last thing that we want is the output of invoking the final function in func array with our input. So if we have no more functions in func array, we can assume that, that we are done uh, invoking all of those functions, and so we can just return our input. So our base case is going to be if no funks in func array return input. Otherwise, let's talk about what our recursive case is going to involve. So for a recursive case, what we want to do here is use the first func in func array uh, and invoke that first func in func array using the input parameter as an argument. And then we want to use the output of invoking that first func in func array as the input for our recursive call. So let's, uh, let's talk about that really quick. Let's write that down quickly. So first we need to invoke the first func in func array using input as argument. Okay, and then the second thing that we need to do is recursively call flow using output of previous the output of our first func call as input. And then the func array that we want to pass into our recursive call is going to be our existing func array without that first func function that we've already invoked. So, um, and func array without first func as func array. So this is kind of our overall strategy. Um, and what this what this should really look like is, let's say that we have flow to, um, and let's say that we have functions multiply by two and add three. And we'll say that we have those defined elsewhere. First, we're going to check uh, if there are no funks in func array. So, uh, if we have no funks in func array, which we currently do, then we would return input. Um, but since we have some funks in func array, uh, our recursive case is going to hit. So we want to uh, understand what multiply by two, invoking that with two, and we expect that to give us four. And then we want to call flow again and as we said, we want to pass in the output of that multiply by two with two. And then we just want to pass in add three, right? Because we've already 
we've already got the output for multiply by two, so we don't need that func anymore. And now we want to move on to the next one. So this is going to be our next call. Um, and we still have funks in func array, so we expect to hit our recursive case here, where we're going to invoke add three with the parameter of four, and we expect that to return seven. And then again, we're going to recursively call this time, passing in an empty array because we are past all of the funks in func array. And at this point, we would hit our base case where we have no funks in func array, so we're just going to return seven. So that's kind of the overall strategy here. Let's look at how we are actually going to implement this in code. So I'm just going to copy and or cut and paste this into our function because here's really all of our pseudocode for this function. So our base case again, if func array dot length equals zero, we're just going to return input. Okay, and then in our recursive case, uh, since we want to actually use the result of invoking this first function, we're gonna create a variable, let's call it output, to hold the invocate the return value of the invocation here of func array at position zero because we want the first func in func array. Then we're going to invoke that using input as our argument. And so then we want to hit this recursive call here. So we're going to invoke flow. And we're going to pass it output. And then we want to also pass in func array without first func. And I'm going to use the slice method to do that. So we're going to pass in func array dot slice and starting at position zero. So this slice method is going to make a copy of func array. Um, and it's going to start at whatever whatever index I pass in as the first first argument. And then if I don't pass in a second argument, it's just going to go all the way to the end. So in this case, we're going to see func array dot slice at position one, starting at position one, that's inclusive. So we're only going to exclude um, the func at position zero, which is the one we've already used. So that's the one we want to get rid of. And that's the whole uh, bit of code here. So let's use our test case here and just make sure that everything is passing. Oh, and one thing that we forgot here is we need to return the recursive call. And there we go.